this is the man that a lot of us ridicule sometimes. Some of us mock him, alayhi salatu wasalam. The man that we don't value much and don't know much about, alayhi salatu wasalam. This is the man, ladies and gentlemen, who will come in the day of judgment when the sun will be on the top of the heads. People will be naked that day. Naked. But nobody will care about anybody else. Nobody will care about anybody else that day. Everybody will say, myself, 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 myself. A bunch of believers will get together and they will go to some prophets. They will go to Adam. Oh, Adam, please intercede. Intercede on our behalf. Adam will be scared that day. He will say, no, 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 myself, myself. Go look at somebody else. Go, go ask somebody else. Go, they will go to Nuh. Oh, Nuh. Noah, please intercede on our behalf. Nuh will say, no, no, myself, myself. Go, go ask somebody else. They will go to Ibrahim. Oh, Ibrahim, Ibrahim. Intercede on our behalf. Intercede. Ibrahim will say, no, no, no. Myself, myself. I'm scared. I only care about myself. They will go to Musa. They will go to Isa. And then they will go to Rasulullah. They will go to the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Prophet Muhammad will say, Ana laha, ana laha, ana laha. I'm for it, I'm for it, I'm for it. I will go for it. I will go for it. And then he will go. He will go on his knees supplicating Allah. Supplicating Allah. Glorifying Allah. Praising Allah. And then Allah will say, What do you need, O oh Prophet Muhammad? The Prophet will say, Oh Allah, I'm not asking you for my most beloved wife, Aisha. I am not asking you for my most beloved daughter, Fatima. Oh Allah, I'm asking you for my ummati, ummati, ummati. My people, my people, please have mercy upon them. Please have mercy upon them. This is Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Bismillah, walhamdulillah, wa salatu wa salamu ala rasulillah. I'm very happy and pleased and honored to be amongst you today, my brothers and sisters, to talk about this very special topic. The topic. about a very special man and that man is Prophet Muhammad when I say Prophet Muhammad those who are Muslim should say Ali salatu wasalam or should say sallallahu alayhi wasallam you should send your blessings upon the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam but let me first set the stage and tell you something very, very important that was mentioned by the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. He says, he says in this hadith, the hadith is reported by Bukhari and Muslim and narrated by Abu Hurairah. A very sound, authentic hadith. The Prophet Muhammad Alaihi Salatu Wasallam says, when people get together, just like this, when people, they get together to talk about the greatness of Allah, which we're doing right now. When people get together to talk about the greatness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, to mention the name of Allah, to praise Allah, to glorify Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, what would happen to them? The Prophet says five things would happen to them. Number one, Number one, 
غشيتهم الرحمة رحمة mercy from Allah سبحانه وتعالى would overwhelm them when people just like this they come from different countries different places they come to talk about the greatness of Allah listen to the greatness of Allah the speech of the greatness of Allah glorifying Allah Almighty what would happen to them number one mercy from Allah would overwhelm them number one number two نزلت عليهم السكينة نزلت عليهم السكينة what is سكينة tranquility from Allah um, I always have problem with mics <laughs> Tranquility from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will descend upon them. Sakina, tranquility, will descend upon them. That's number two. Don't you feel the serenity today? Yeah. It is from the Sakina. Number three. Ya salam. The angels will surround them. And at this very particular moment, I swear by Allah, the one who holds my soul, that at this very particular moment, the angels are here spreading their wings on top of us, right here. Who says? The Prophet Muhammad says, The angels, they come down and surround us. If we were to see the unseen, if we were to see the unseen, we will faint. Why? Because at this very particular moment, the angels are here. That's number three. Number four. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala almighty, God, mentions their names to his angels. At this very particular moment, right now, Allah almighty, He's telling his angels, all oh my angels, look at my servant Yusuf. Look at my servant Muhammad. Look at my servant Abdullah. Look at my servant Fatima, Aisha, Khadija. Look, he's praising us. He says, look at them. They are here talking about me. Isn't that an honor? What do you feel? If you were to see your face or your picture front page on your newspaper, what newspaper do you have here in Norway? Oslo, is it Telegraph? The new... Time? Ben? Ben? Bay, Bay, I don't know. I mean, Norwegian sounds like, I don't know, mashallah, you know, it sounds... Bay, whatever it is. When you see your face, when you see a picture on Bay's paper, just imagine base paper, you know, your Norway's, your Oslo paper. You wake up in the morning, your, your page, your face, your picture, front page. With a big title on top. Muhammad, the man. With a, just like a, on Facebook, you know, the thumbs up, the man. How do you feel? How would you feel when the do you guys have a prime minister or a, or a president? Prime minister. How would you feel if you were watching TV on the news comes the prime minister of Norway and says, ladies and gentlemen, I've got some news. I would like to tell you that I love Yusuf Chamber. And then he mentions Yusuf Chamber. I like to mention that I love and then he mentions your name. How would you feel? The prime Minister of Norway mentions your name and he praises you. I think you would feel kind of cool, wouldn't you? How about if Allah Almighty is mentioning your names right now at this very particular moment to his angels praising you, saying, Oh, my angels, look at my servant, look at my slaves, they are here talking about my talking about my greatness glorifying me how do we get this in this type of gathering and number five you want to know number five which is the best do you want to know number five no yes yes or yes yes i won't tell you i tell you at the end inshallah ta'ala 
I promise I will tell you at the end, inshallah. Let's talk about Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Who is he? As I was taking notes, preparing for this course, preparing for this lecture, tears came down from my eyes. Just go into the seerah, the biography of the Prophet Muhammad alayhi salatu wa sallam. What an amazing man. Indeed, what an amazing personality. Wallahi, I feel so sorry for those who don't know the reality of this man. The truth about this man. I'm talking about Muslims. I'm not talking about non-Muslims. I'm talking about Muslims who don't really know the value of this man. Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Who is he? Was he sent to the Arabs? Was he sent to Arabia? Who is he? In about 40 minutes or so, I'm going to summarize the life of the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam to you. In fact, it's a lecture which I have given. It took me about a year talking about the seerah of the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu back in Canada. In one of the most prominent centers there in Canada, it took me about a year just going through the seerah, the biography of the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Today, I'm going to summarize one year worth of lectures in 40 minutes. To tell you about this wonderful man. Allah says on his behalf, وَمَا أَرْسَلْنَاكَ إِلَّا رَحْمَةً لِلْعَالَمِينَ We have surely sent you rahma, mercy, mercy to mankind, mercy to the worlds. He was sent mercy not to the Arabs, not to Arabia, not to Canada, not to the US, not to Norway. He was sent to both men and jinn. He was sent as a mercy to mankind, alayhi salatu wassalam. He was born in the Arabian city of Mecca and was orphaned in a very early age. Orphaned in a very early age and was brought up under the care of his uncle, Abu Talib. He later worked as a merchant and as a shepherd, as all prophets, if you look back into the biography of all prophets and most prophets, they worked as shepherds. So was the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam who worked as a shepherd and was first married in the age of 25. He was first married when he was 25, Alayhi Salatu Wasallam. Discontented with the life in Mecca, he retreated himself to a cave, to a cave called Cave Hira, Ghar Hira, which exists today in Mecca. He would retreat himself and go for meditation and reflection. Today, he is 40 years old. In this cave called Hira. Please give me your hearts. Yes, I know. I know you may have heard this line before. I don't want to talk to your ears. Keep your ears to yourself. I'd like to talk to your hearts. If I may request you to kindly let me talk to your hearts. Concentrate with me. Please. His wife, who was older than him, used to go up. It takes about an hour to a fit man, to a fit man, to walk up from the bottom of the mountain, to go up into the top of where the cave is. Some of you may be been to Mecca, and some of you may have gone woke up or walked up that you know the mountain to go into this cave of Hira just to visit that cave it takes to about like a, a well-fitted man about a year I mean not a year I'm sorry about a, an hour walking up 
quite a steep hill. Imagine this wife called Khadija. She would walk up every day, every day to bring food to her husband. She would serve him. And he wasn't a prophet at the time. He was not a prophet at the time. Yet she would go. She would take food and walk up to support her husband. Today he's 40 years old. Off of nowhere, as he's sitting in this cave, came a man wearing white. He goes, he takes the Prophet Muhammad وسلم, and then he hugs him so tight, so tight that the Prophet couldn't breathe. And then he tells him, read. He tells him, read. Iqra. The Prophet says, Ma ana I don't know how to read. Our Prophet was illiterate. He did not know how to read. He did not know how to write. He was illiterate. He says, I don't know what to read. I don't know how to read. So the man, one more time, he took the Prophet. He hugged him so tight and he says, read. Prophet Muhammad said, I don't know how to read. And then he took him a third time, hugged him so tight that the Prophet almost choked and told him, read. And then the Prophet said, what should I read? Came down the first revelation of the Quran. The Prophet was so scared, was so terrified. He come down running, rounding that mount, running that mount. And then he hears a voice coming from nowhere. A voice, oh Muhammad, oh Muhammad. And then he looks up and then he sees this creature which he has never seen before. He sees the angel Gabriel, Jibreel in his physical shape as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created him. The Prophet says, Jibreel filled up the horizon. If I was to look right, I saw him. If I was to look left, I saw him. If I was to look up, I saw him. If anywhere I looked, I saw Jibreel telling me, Oh Muhammad, you are the Prophet of Allah and I am Jibreel. Came down running, scared. Petrified. Then he goes to whom? Allah. He goes to his best friend. Do you know who his best friend is? His wife, Khadija. His best friend. She hugs him. Khadija, I'm scared. Khadija, I'm scared. Zammiluni, Zammiluni. Cover me, cover me, cover me. She covers him. What's wrong, Ya Rasulullah? What's wrong, Ya Rasulullah? I'm scared. I'm scared. I don't know. I don't know what happened. I'm scared. She covers him. And then she tries to comfort him. And sisters, she tries to comfort her husband. He was 40 years old. From there on, the Prophet never tasted the sweetness of sleep. He would start his endeavor giving da'wah, conveying the message day and night, talking about the message. Khadija would feel so sorry for him. Ya Rasulullah, take some rest. Oh Prophet, take some rest. He would say, Oh Khadija, there is no more rest. There is no more rest, O oh Khadija. And she would support him. She would support him. Three years, ladies and gentlemen. Three years, Prophet continuously giving da'wah, conveying the message, talking day in, day out. Only few people embraced the religion of Islam. Four people. His wife, his best friend Abu Bakr, 
his wife, his best friend Abu Bakr. He had a male slave by the name of Zayd ibn Haritha, which he adopted, embraced Islam. And his cousin, a little kid by the name of Ali, 10 years old, embraced Islam. Four people. And then came down another revelation, Surah Yusuf. The Surah of Yusuf, Joseph. Telling the Prophet about the hardship that Yusuf went through when he was thrown into the well. To teach him, look what other prophets went through. Revelation after revelation. And then came another revelation. Now came the revelation to convey the message out loud because initially he was talking only to the elite, the people, his close friends. Now the message came to go and convey the message out loud. So he goes into this mount in the Jabal al Safa. Those who've been to Mecca, they know where this mount called Safa is. He goes on the top and then he says, Oh, people. Oh people, and then he declared his prophethood alayhi salatu wasalam. From there on came the real test. The real test. They used to call him Al-Ameen, the truthful. People used to love him, used to respect him. They used to call him the truthful. And then they started calling him the liar. Tortured, persecuted. People who followed him got persecuted and tortured. His daughter Fatima would follow him anywhere he went. As people used to throw garbage on him, mock him, ridicule him, she was out there with her father. Alayhi salatu wasalam. He goes and prays by the Kaaba in Mecca. They would come, people from Quraysh that tribe from Quraysh and they would throw dirt on him, garbage on him, filthy stuff on him. Fatima would cry and she says, Wa abata, Oh father! And he would say, Don't worry about your father. Don't worry about your father. A man comes by the name of Uqba from the clan of Quraysh. He takes a piece of cloth and then he goes to the Prophet Muhammad and then he chokes him until the Prophet goes at his knees. The Prophet goes at his knees. He could no longer breathe. Just for Islam. La ilaha illallah. More torture and more persecution. To his very close friends like Bilal, like Khabbab, a man by the name of Khabbab who followed the Prophet Muhammad he was so tortured, so much so that they used to bring hot charcoal, hot charcoal. They would take him and take his, and no, they would take his, his clothes off and they would take his back and they would make him go under like his back face his back and against the, the ch hot charcoal and then they would drag him drag him so much so that his skin would come out so that he can denounce his religion yet they did not denounce their religion they stayed strong and faithful he would go to his ankle a very very dark night, a rainy night, a cold night, he knocks at the door. <coughs> His uncle says, the person who comes to visit me at this time must love me. I will give him anything he asks for. He opens the door and then he finds the Prophet Muhammad wet, tired. What do you want? He says, he says, oh uncle, oh uncle, believe, believe, oh uncle. His uncle would say, go, go. I don't want to believe in you. They try to negotiate some terms with him. 
as the message started growing they started to negotiate some terms he refused so they put him and his friend under a siege a siege in a shop called shop Abu Talib for three years they starved him and his friends they starved so much so that they had to eat the leaves from trees our religion ladies and gentlemen brothers and sisters this religion of Al Islam did not come easy to us did not come easy don't think that Islam came easy to you and I people lost lives people sacrificed to bring us Al Islam they starved for three years so much so that they ate the leaves from trees. Quraysh came to Khadija because they used to respect her so much. They said, oh Khadija, you don't have to stay with them. You may go, Mu'azzaza Mukarrama, honor to your home. She says, no, no, I'd like to stay with my husband. She dies later on. The love of the Prophet Khadija, she dies. And then his uncle who used to support him, his other uncle who used to support him dies. It was called the year of sadness. The year of sadness. Who would support him? As if Allah is telling him, Oh Muhammad, you have known but me. You come to me. I support you you are the messenger of God you come to me he goes to an area called a Ta'if another tribe called a Ta'if to convey the message people threw stone, stones at him rocked at him he started bleeding Ali salatu salam bleeding they broke his teeth Ali salatu salam blood everywhere just for one message La ilaha illallah and then he goes into this trip into the heavens it's called in Arabi Al Isra Wal Mi'raj he goes he meets some prophets he goes into the heavens and then he comes back with the beautiful gift the fruit Salah the prayers 13 years in Mecca it's called the Meccan period only about 100 150 people believed in him so the decision came to migrate from Mecca to Medina he migrated to Medina he migrated to Medina crying because he did not want to leave Mecca he migrated but first he went because he was hiding with his friend Abu Bakr his very close friend they came and they hid in this cave it's called Jabal Thor cave and the daughter listen up sisters listen up sisters those who and brothers who feel sometimes kind of tired not wanting to go to the masjid there is a, a girl by the name of Asma Asma she was the daughter of Abu Bakr when the Prophet was in the cave she was pregnant she was seven months pregnant seven months pregnant and she used to go at night bring in the food walking for five kilometers every day bringing food to the cave where the Prophet Muhammad and her father was every day for three days feeding the Prophet seven seven months pregnant walking for five kilometers and then the Prophet migrated to Medina now he goes to Medina the very first thing he did when he reached Medina he called for brotherhood between the Muhajireen and the Ansar the people who migrated with him and the people who welcomed him the people who migrated with him are called the Muhajireens the migra those who migrated and those who welcomed them are called the Ansar so he called for brotherhood between the Muhajireen and the Ansar he built his first masjid his first mosque and then he built his first home which was in the mosque let me briefly describe to you the house of Prophet Muhammad. If you have some, some notes, take some notes. 
to describe the house of Prophet Muhammad because it's a very long description of the house of the Prophet. Very, 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 very long description to the house of the Prophet Muhammad He had three things in his house. A bed filled or stuffed with palm leaves. A pillow stuffed with palm leaves and a bag that had water. This was the house of Prophet Muhammad. That's all he had. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And then comes in Badr. The battle of Badr. Where the Muslims had to take back their possessions that were taken from them. And something interesting happened in the Battle of Badr. Very interesting because the Muslims, they were not ready. Something interesting happened. What happened was, could you come? Yes. And you? And you. Three of you, could you come? something interesting happened I'm a very visual guy there's some people who are visual I understand by showing things by seeing things by looking at things so I'm going to demonstrate something that happened in the battle of Badr could you line up here just line up you go in the middle brother yeah you go in the middle you go there so the prophet was lining up the army the Muslims weren't ready for this battle. They came out for the caravan, for their belongings. Then came the order from Allah that in fact, there is a battle here. War between Quraysh and the Muslims. So as the Prophet was lining up the army, came a man who wasn't really lined up. This man, he's called, his, his name is called Sawad ibn Ghaziyah. Sawad ibn Ghaziyah. So the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam came and poked him a little bit. Like this. He had a big belly. This man called Sawad, he had a big belly. So he wasn't making up the line. So the Prophet came and So the man said, Oh, Prophet of Allah, you hurt me. I want my right. I want Al Qasas. The Sahaba were so astonished. What are you talking about? Who are you talking to? Prophet Muhammad, you want your right? What kind of right are you asking about? Oh, Prophet, you hurt me. I want my right. I have to hurt you back. So the Prophet gave him that stick and he says, here, take the stick, hurt me back. The man said, no, Prophet of Allah. You see, you're wearing a shield. You have a shield. I have no shield. Take off your shield. So the Prophet took off the shield. He says, come on, yalla, poke me. Quickly, quickly. The man says, no, Rasulullah, listen, look. You're wearing something. I'm wearing nothing. I'm, I only have this thing that's covering my private parts. I have, you know, I'm topless. Take off your shirt. The Sahaba were getting really mad. What's this guy saying? And then the Prophet says, yes, you're right. You're right. Then the Prophet took off his shirt. He says, okay, now, quickly, harm me, yalla, poke me back. You know what the man did? He rushed and he kissed the belly of the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. The Prophet says, why? Why all this? The man says, Ya Rasulullah, O Prophet of Allah, look at me, look at us. We're not ready for this. I'm not ready for this. I could have done, I could die in this battle. I want the last thing that I would have done in this life 
is to have kissed your belly O Rasulullah O Prophet of Allah thank you thank you Zakumah came another battle the battle of Uhud and then after the Uhud came one day the Prophet was crying he was crying he's crying so much that Allah Almighty he sent Jibreel and Allah knows why Prophet Muhammad is crying Allah sent Jibreel he says oh Jibreel go ask Prophet Muhammad why is he crying so Prophet Muhammad Jibreel comes to Prophet Muhammad says Ya Rasulullah O oh Prophet of Allah why are you crying the Prophet would say Ummati Ummati my people my people I want Allah to save my people my people my people I want Allah to save my people Jibreel will go up to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala almighty and Allah knows and he would say oh Allah he's crying for his people and then Allah says, go and tell him, we shall please him and please his people. Just stop crying, O Prophet. Just stop crying, O Prophet. He would play with his grandchildren, Al Hassan, Wal Hussein. He would hug them and kiss them. Comes a Bedouin, an Arabian man, who sees the Prophet hugging those kids and kissing them and then he says do you people do you Arab kiss your kids do you people hug your kids he says I have 10 kids I've never kissed any of them the Prophet says it looks like Allah has snatched mercy off of your heart whoever does not have mercy upon people Allah would not have mercy upon him Man la yarham, la yurham. Whosoever does not have mercy upon people, Allah Almighty would not have mercy upon him or her. Have mercy upon people. Have mercy upon one another. Have mercy upon your parents. Have mercy upon your children. Have mercy upon those non-Muslims of Norway who live here, who have welcomed you. You people who have migrated from so many countries far away, living amongst them. Have mercy upon them. They don't know. A lot of non-Muslims don't know. I would not call them kafir. They don't know. But once they taste the sweetness of honey, they would know the value of honey. I can tell you about honey all I want. But you know what? If you have never tasted honey, I can describe honey in any way I like for so many hours and hours talking about honey. But you would say, yeah, it sounds all good. But once you taste honey, then you say, yes, indeed, honey is good. Once they taste Islam, they will say, yes, Islam was really the truth. Have mercy. As the Prophet had mercy upon people. Alayhi salatu wassalam. Now the Prophet is 63 years old. He's 63 years old. Growing gray hair. And then he goes to his final farewell Hajj pilgrimage. It's called Hajjatul Wada, the farewell pilgrimage. And then he goes and he says, as Allah revealed, after he completed that pilgrimage, he says, "Al-yawm akmaltu lakum dinukum, wa atmamtu alaykum ni'mati." Today, I have perfected your religion. Today is the final thing of Al-Islam. I have completed, I have conveyed my message. Everything I have, I have conveyed to you. Umar was happy. Umar, the companion of the Prophet, was very happy. Abu Bakr, his other companion was crying. When he heard that revelation, that ayah, that verse, he was crying. Why? Abu Bakr cried because Abu Bakr understood that that verse meant the near of the death of the Prophet Muhammad because now his message is over Khalas, he delivered his message now he will die eight days please 
give me a few more minutes because this is the end of the life of Rasulullah eight days before his death he says I want to go visit the graveyard of those who died in Uhud in the battle of Uhud so many years ago so he goes to visit them showing his loyalty and then he comes back crying he comes back crying and then he says the song companions they ask him why are you crying oh Rasulullah why are you crying he says اشتقتو, اشتقتو he says I miss my brothers I miss my brothers and then the companions they said ya Rasulullah aren't we your brothers he says no you are my companions you are my companions my brothers are those who will come after me and he will they will believe in me he's talking about you and I he says I miss my brothers I miss my brothers those who will come after me and would believe in me and then he feels pain So he goes to the house of Aisha because Khadija is dead. He married Aisha, his other wife. He goes to her house to be looked after. He's sweating, alayhi salatu wassalam. Sweating. Laying on the lap of Aisha. Aisha, she takes the hand of the Prophet Muhammad and then she wipes the forehead of the Prophet with his hand they ask her why are you using his hand she says there is more blessing in his hand than mine she takes the hand of the prophet and then she wipes the sweat coming out from the forehead of Rasulullah alayhi salatu wassalam people started gathering in the masjid they don't eat they don't drink they're sad sad because the prophet is sick and the Prophet is dying so the Prophet comes out he feels a little better so he comes out he comes out to give his final sermon I'd like you my brothers and sisters please please I urge you to imagine imagine for a moment with me that you are amongst those people today that you are amongst them so just imagine you are there in the Masjid al Nabawi, and the Prophet is there giving his last sermon. Ayyuhan Nas, he says, O oh people, ka'annakum takhafuna alay, as if you are concerned about me. O oh people, don't be concerned, don't be sad. Maw'idukum, maw'idukum, ma'i. He says, we will meet there by the basin in the heavens by the basin called Al Kawthar. That's where we will meet. The first time you and I, God willing, inshallah, we will see the face of the Prophet is by this basin called Al Kawthar, a lake called Al Kawthar, whereby the water is sweeter than honey, whiter than milk. You will drink from it. If you were to drink from, from it, you shall never, never feel thirsty again. That is the first time where you will see the Prophet. Imagine some people will be called by name. Oh Muhammad, oh Uthman, oh Umar, Fatima, Khadija. Come, 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 drink. People will drink from the Kawthar. And some people will drink from the hands of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa If you were to drink from his hand, you shall never feel thirsty again. He says, my meeting with you isn't by the basin. Don't be scared. Don't be sad. Don't be afraid about me. Ayyuhan nas, mal faqru akhsha alaykum. Oh people, I'm not scared about poverty if it may happen to you. I'm not scared about that. I'm really worried that you may dwell into this world of dunya. And then you will forget about your main vision, your main mission your main message 
if this world of the dunya was to come and then you will lose focus that's what I'm cons concerned about not about the poverty not about lack of money I'm concerned that you will lose your concentration your focus oh people are you Hannas are you Hannas he says oh people Abdun khayyalahullah oh. Abdun khayyalahullah a man was given a choice he says a man a man was given a choice to live forever and ever or to choose to meet his Lord that man chose to meet his Lord nobody understood who that man was that the Prophet was talking about except Abu Bakr Abu Bakr started crying Ya Rasulullah we will sacrifice our families for you we will sacrifice ourselves for you our wealth for you the companions they were amazed oh Abu Bakr why are you saying that Prophet says a man a man was given a choice Abu Bakr understood who that man was that man was Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam he's given a choice do you want to live forever or do you want to meet your Lord the Prophet chose to meet his Lord Ayyuha Nas O people Man kuntu qalb jalattu lahu zahara fahadha zahari fal yaqtassu minhu aw yaqtass minhu he says, Oh people, if I have whipped anyone or hurt anyone, here's my back, come and hurt me. If I have hurt or harmed anyone, here's my back, come and hurt me, come and harm me. If I have cursed anyone, here's me, come and curse me. If I have taken any money from anyone, here's my money. Come and take my money. A man stood up and he says, Oh Prophet, you took three dirhams from me. You took three dirhams from me. Then the Prophet says, Oh Abbas, his uncle, Oh Abbas, give this man his three dirhams. Anybody else? The Prophet says, Anybody else? Anybody else? People were quiet. And then the Prophet says, Halakum alayya shay. Anybody else? Do you have anything against me? Anything against me? Please come and tell me. And then he goes and he says, Malam Yakum Falaysa Ma'a Fal Yusamih. Malam Yakum Fal Yusamih. He says, Whosoever does not stand up or feeling shy, let him forgive me. Let him forgive me. He says, Let him forgive me. I want to meet my Lord clean. I want to meet my Lord clean. So please forgive me. Please forgive me. And then he says, Ayu Hannas, O people, be kind to women. Be kind to women. And then he makes dua. Awakumullah. Nasarakumullah. تبتكم الله حفظكم الله أعانكم الله أيدكم الله He started praying for you and I He started praying for the Muslims He started praying for mankind May Allah preserve you May Allah guide you May Allah protect you May Allah protect you May Allah give you Nusrah May Allah give you Nusrah He started making dua for you and I he started making dua for the entire mankind alayhi salatu was salam and then he says his final word he says ayyuhan nas O oh people listen to this ayyuhan nas ballighu minni salam likulli man tabi'ani min ummati ila yawm al qiyamah لكل من تبعني من أمتي إلى يوم القيامة. Oh people, convey my salam to everyone that will come after me until the end of time, until the day of judgment. Oh people, convey my salam, convey convey my greetings to me, from me to anyone who will come after me until the day of judgment. 
Yes, O Prophet of Allah, the salam has reached us. Wa alayka salam, ya Rasulullah. Wa alayka salam, ya Rasulullah. Thank you, ya Rasulullah. Thank you, thank you. You cared so much about us. You cared so much about us, so much so that before you died, you cared to send and convey your salam to us. Thank you, ya Rasulullah. Wa alayka salam, ya Rasulullah. Wa alayka salam, ya Rasulullah. And then he goes sick again. And he leans on Aisha, his wife. He goes and he leans. Imagine these people who talk about women in Islam. Look how Allah honored women in Islam. He died, the Prophet. But before he died, he goes to Aisha, his wife. He leans on her chest. He leans on her chest. He could not speak. He couldn't speak. And he was sweating, alayhi salatu wasalam. Comes Zayd, Usama ibn Zayd. Usama ibn Zayd comes to see him. And then the Prophet raises his hand because he couldn't talk. So he raises his hands, making dua for Zayd. And he was doing this, supplicating Allah. And he said, oh, this. Usama understood that the Prophet was making dua for him, supplicating Allah, invoking Allah for him. And then Abdullah ibn Abi Bakr, the son of Abu Bakr comes, had the miswak, had this miswak like a brush. The Prophet saw that brush. He looked at it. Aisha, she saw the Prophet looking at the miswak. And then she says, Oh Rasulullah, do you want the miswak? And then he nodded because he couldn't talk. He did this. So she took the miswak. And then she softened it. Softened it. And then she applied it on the mouth of Rasulullah. She applied it on the mouth of Rasulullah alayhi salatu wasalam. Comes Jibreel. The angel Gabriel comes and he says, Assalamu alaikum ya Rasulullah. Peace be with you, O Rasulullah. And then the Prophet says, Wa alaikum assalamu ya Jibreel. Jibreel says, O oh Prophet, the angel of death is with me. The angel of death is with me. He's asking permission to come. The angel of death has never asked permission from no one before you. And he will never ask permission from nobody after you. Ya Rasulullah. He's asking, can he come? Which means if he was to come, he will take the soul of the Prophet Muhammad. And then the Prophet says, yes, let him in. Ya Rasulullah. Let him in, O Jibreel. So the angel of death comes. And then he says, Assalamu alaikum, Ya Rasulullah. Peace be with you, O Prophet of Allah. And then the Prophet says, Wa alayka salam. And all of a sudden, the hands of the Prophet fell. And then his head became so heavy on the chest of Aisha. Aisha, she knew that the Prophet died. She knew that the Prophet died. There's nothing she could do. She did not know what to do. She panicked. She started crying. She came out from her house where the mosque was. And then the companions were there waiting for the news. And then she goes, she goes, Mata Rasulullah. Mata Rasulullah. The Prophet has died. The Prophet has died. The Prophet has died. And then the and then the masjid bursted cry people bursted cry when they heard that the prophet has died came Abu Bakr came Abu Bakr to see the prophet Muhammad because the companion panicked the companion panicked Uthman went on his knees Ali fainted 
Omar took a sword and said, Whosoever said that the Prophet has died, I'm going to chop off his head. The Prophet didn't die. Like Jesus, he just went to speak to Allah. He's coming back. Came Abu Bakr. And then he goes to see the Prophet Muhammad. Alayhi salatu wasalam. He goes to see him. Aisha crying. Comes Abu Bakr, her father. The Prophet is there. And then he goes. And then he hugs him. And then he kisses him on his forehead. And then he says, You smell so good. Alive and death, Ya Rasulullah. The death that Allah has prescribed on you, you certainly have tasted it. The death that Allah has prescribed on you, you certainly have tasted it. And then he came out. He came out. And he tell his people, O oh people, Ayyuhan Nas, Man kana ya'budu Muhammadan fa inna Muhammadan qad mat Waman kana ya'budu Allah fa inna Allah hayyu la yamut O people, whosoever worships Muhammad, Muhammad has passed away, Muhammad is gone, Muhammad is dead But whosoever worships Allah, Allah is alive and shall never die Allah is alive and shall never die they came to wash him. They washed him. They buried him. They buried him. And Fatima came, his daughter. How dare you? How dare you throw dust in the face of Rasulullah? How dare you throw dust in the face of my father? How dare you throw dust in the face of Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Cry. But he died, Ali Sallallahu Alaihi And he got buried, Ali Sallallahu Alaihi This is the man that a lot of us ridicule sometimes. Some of us mock him, alayhi salatu wasalam. The man that we don't value much and don't know much about, alayhi salatu wasalam. This is the man, ladies and gentlemen, who will come in the day of judgment. When the sun will be on the top of the heads, will be naked that day naked but nobody will care about anybody else nobody will care about anybody else that day everybody will say myself 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 a bunch of believers will get together and they will go to some prophets they will go to Adam oh Adam please intercede intercede on our behalf Adam will be scared that day. He will say, no, 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 myself, myself. Go look at somebody else. Go, go ask somebody else. Go, they will go to Noah. Oh, Noah. Noah, please intercede on our behalf. Noah will say, no, no, myself, myself. Go, go ask somebody else. They will go to Ibrahim. Oh, Ibrahim, Ibrahim. Intercede on our behalf. Intercede. Ibrahim will say, no, no. Myself, myself. I'm scared. I only care about myself. They will go to Musa. They will go to Isa. And then they will go to Rasulullah. They will go to the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Prophet Muhammad will say, Ana laha, ana laha, ana laha. I'm for it. I'm for it. I'm for it. I will go for it. I will go for it. And then he will go. He will go on his knees. Supplicating Allah. Supplicating Allah. Glorifying Allah. Praising Allah. And then Allah will say, What do you need, O Prophet Muhammad? The Prophet will say, Oh Allah, I'm not asking you for my most beloved wife, Aisha. I am not asking you for my most beloved daughter, Fatima. Oh Allah, I'm asking you for my ummati, ummati, ummati. My people, my people, please have mercy upon them. Please have mercy upon them. This is Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa 
in a nutshell who was sent as mercy to mankind he was not only sent to me and you but he was sent as rahmah rahmah to mankind I don't understand why some would mock him draw pictures caricatures mocking him the man who did not worry about himself who did not care about himself not about his children not about his wife but he cared about you he cared about you he cared for your salvation Ali salatu wassalam do you love him? do you really love him? how much do you love him? how much do you love him? how much are you willing to sacrifice for him? He's gone. But he left his sunnah. Or his sunnah. He left his teachings. Alayhi salatu wassalam. And his teachings shall never die. The teachings of the Prophet Muhammad wassalam, shall never die. So he says, Alayhi salatu wassalam. La yablughanna hada al-deen. He says, and the hadith is narrated by Samim al dari and reported by At-Tabarani. He says, Alayhi salatu wa salam, la yablughanna hadha al-deen, ma balagha al-laylu wa al-nahar, wa la yatruka Allahu bayta madarin wa la wabarin, illa adkharahu Allahu hadha al-deen, bi'izzi aziz, aw bidulli dalil. He says, Alayhi salatu wa salam, that this religion will reach the four corners of the world. There will not be one single house left that has not heard of the religion of Islam. There will not be one house left in the entire globe that has not heard of La ilaha illallah. My brothers and sisters, the statistics shows and the statistics are done by non-Muslims that Islam is the fastest growing religion. Walhamdulillah. Of, of every five people that embrace Islam, four are women and one is a man. The ratio of four to one. Every five people that embrace Islam, four are women and one is a man. What's wrong with this religion? By Allah, what's wrong with this religion? They claim, they say that it is bad for women. It oppresses women. How come women are embracing Islam? Give Islam a chance. That's all I'm asking you. Give Islam a chance and you shall see. May Allah bless you all. May Allah grant you the highest level in Jannah, insha'Allah ta'ala. I'd like to ask one more time, all of you to stand up, please. I promised you. I promised you the hadith. I promised you about that fifth thing. I did not uh, forget. When people, they get together like this, five things will happen to them. Number one, mercy of Allah would overwhelm them. Number two, tranquility will descend upon them. Number three, angels will surround them with their wings. Number four, Allah will mention them to his angels. Number five, number five, ladies, gentlemen, number five, وَيُنَادِي مُنَادٍ مِنَ السَّمَاءِ When this gathering is over, when the gathering is over, when the lecture is over, when the seminar is over, يُنَادِي مُنَادٍ مِنَ السَّمَاءِ أَنْ قُومُوا مَغْفُورًا لَكُمْ قَدْ بُدِّلَتْ سَيَّعَاتُكُمْ حَسَنَاتِ When this thing is over, a caller from the heavens will call and he will say, Stand up! Like I said, stand up and leave! All your sins have been forgiven. All your sins have been forgiven. And not only that, Allah says in the hadith, He says, قَدْ بُدِّلَتْ سَيِّعَاتُكُمْ حَسَنَاتِ And all your bad deeds have been converted into good deeds. This is in Bukhari and Muslim. It's sound and authentic. Congratulations. You babies. You are babies. Your sins have been forgiven. Congratulations to you. Now you deserve a hug, don't you? You deserve a big hug. A big one, a big one.
Thank you. Thank you. Jazakum Allah khair. May Allah bless you all. Until tomorrow, I say Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi ta'ala wa barakatuh. Q&A? Okay, Q&A. Bismillah. Hit me. How is Muhammad merciful if he slaughtered Jews in Banu Quraida? Okay. How is Muhammad merciful if he slaughtered Jews in Banu Quraida? Bismillah, alhamdulillah, wa salatu wassalam ala rasulillah. There were four Jewish tribes in Medina, living in Medina. They were living in peace with the Muslims. Um, a tribe called Banu Qaynuqa Banu Quraida it's one of them Banu Qaynuqa is another of them Banu Nadir so they were living in peace with the Prophet والسلام, with the Muslims doing business with one another but they came that they betrayed the Prophet ﷺ and wanted to kill him. Came the order from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. When the Prophet Muhammad ﷺ migrated to Medina from Mecca, ten years later he came back to Mecca with a conquest. Conquering back Mecca. Ten years later. And then he saw the faces of those people that persecuted him, tortured, tortured the, his companions, took their belongings, people who, you know, ridiculed him and whatnot. So they came to him. And then he asked them one question. What do you think I should do with you guys now? They says, Oh Prophet, Oh Muhammad, you're a good man. Be a good man. Be forgiving. He says, Go. Go. You are forgiven. Showing mercy towards them. Go. You're forgiven. These are the people who tortured, killed, persecuted the Muslims. Yet the Prophet forgave. And this is the nature of the Prophet Muhammad as he forgave. These people was different. The people of Banu Qalayda were a little different. They betrayed, wanted to kill the Prophet came the order from Allah, God, Almighty, directly, that these people have to be, you know, you have to treat them differently. So the Prophet implemented the law of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It is not that the Prophet was not merciful. It was the command of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to treat them accordingly to what they had or tried to do to the Prophet Muhammad The other tribes, they were cool. Yet, some of them did try to ridicule or mock the Prophet Muhammad or betray. So they got kicked out. But the tribe of Banu Quraida were different. So the punishment was accordingly. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows best. Uh, do you have any questions? We've got a brother over there. We've got any sisters over here? Okay, brother, go for it. Bismillah. Bismillah. Uh, my answer is Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi peace and blessing be upon him was so patient so much and how was his the answer when he gets so much torture so much hardship and how should we be patient in this community we are living in now as he taught has been taught it the Prophet Muhammad sallam, so much and in Mecca so how should we be patient how should we react in this community? Zakallah khair. MashaAllah, mashaAllah. Great question. Zakallah khair. Thank you. You rock. You're the man. I like the question. Because it applies to us today. It applies to the Muslims everywhere. I live in Canada. I uh, lived in the US for 15 years. So I've seen from some Muslims, you know, the bad treatment towards, you know, non Muslims, calling them names 
betraying them and whatnot. And I say, this is not from the, the, the etiquettes, the adab, and the akhlaq, and the manners, and moral behaviors of Islam and the Muslims. In fact, there were so many uh, Muslims who embraced Islam and they came back saying, had we learned Islam from Muslims, we wouldn't have become a Muslim. Once they saw how Muslims treat, you know, treat others. Yes, Akhi, we learn a lot of things from the Prophet. One of the things that we learn from him is, you know, patience. Patience not only with his people, because he had to deal with different fronts, even front with the hypocrites who spoke his language, who claimed that they believed in him, yet they harmed him indirectly. Those were more dangerous than the non Muslims, because the non Muslims, he knew who they were. They came and they faced him. They, he knew them. But the hypocrites, he's a prophet. He knew them. But the, 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 the companions didn't know. So they harmed him. So he had to deal with the hypocrites. He had to deal with the Bedouins. Those who are rough. He had to deal with non-Muslims. He had to deal with new Muslims as well. How to treat them and you know kindly and whatnot. He had to deal with so many fronts. And he showed so much patience. Came this guy who choked him once. He choked him. When the prophet was distributing the, the booties, the spoils of war. And then came, he says, me, 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 me. How about me? And then he choked him. He's a Bedouin. Arabi, Arabi, yani. Bedouin from the Arabi, from the Bedouin of Mecca. How about me, me, me? And then he choked. The prophet says, Wallahi, I have left nothing from me. It's all yours. Take it. It's all yours. I have not left nothing from me. Not for my kids, not for my children. It's all yours. Sabr, sabr, sabr. Came a man. One day, here's another question about patience. Came a man one day who came into the prophet's mission. I want to ask you a question. Can I ask you a question? Yeah, can you come to the mic? You go to a mosque? Yeah. Which mosque do you go to? Uh, in the Bergen Mosque. I'm from Bergen now. Huh? In the Bergen. Bergen? Yeah, Bergen. It's another city in Norway. Uh, What's the name of the mosque? Uh, just Bergen Mosque. Birmingham Mosque? Bergen Mosque. Berlin. Bergen. 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 Bergen, Bergen, yeah, yeah, Bergen, Bergen Mosque. Okay. Yeah. Uh, I just started learning English about a couple months ago, so I'm, I'm new to this. <laughs> no problem. Uh, Bergen Mosque. Yeah. So you go to Bergen Mosque, you go pray, let's say you go there for Fajr. Mashallah, you go for Fajr, right? Yeah, okay. So you go there. In Ramadan, yeah. In Ramadan. So you go for Fajr, and then you go, you enter the masjid, and then you find one brother from anybody like Somalia okay <laughs> or oh, I know the Somalis are here uh, with all the respect somebody from Maghrib yalla, from my country from Morocco he goes by the minbar of the Prophet the pulpit and then with all the respect he urinates okay in Masjid Ber Bergen Mosque okay Bergen Mosque yes in the pulpit right there and then he starts again with all the respect urinating what would you do man well that would be a hard uh, time but you have to be patient you will, have, you will have patience with him would you oh you would have patience with him right like patience <laughs> I will be patient. that patience now nah. mm. this is what happened in the life of the prophet came a man and I agree with you came a man Bedouin again he's a Bedouin Arabi yani. you know these uh, Bedouins they do things in the desert they do things they, they don't you know they don't they have no tickets they don't know so he comes in the midst of the masjid the center of the masjid and then he goes urinating when people pray the Sahaba, the companions, they jumped on him, beating him up. And the guy says, What's wrong with you guys? I'm just urinating. What's wrong with that? And then the Prophet comes and then he pushes them away. Sabah, 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 patience. What's wrong with you? And then he goes, Go finish your thing. Finish. He tells him to finish. And then the man says, Somebody who understands? Yeah. So he goes and he started finishing his thing. <laughs> when he finishes, the Prophet goes to him and he says, this is a mosque. We don't do this in a mosque. If you want to do it, do it in a And then the man says, thank you. Allahumma arhamni walham Muhammada wa la talham ma'ana ahada. Oh Allah have mercy upon me and Muhammad and have mercy, no mercy upon those who wanted to beat him up. Patience in everything, ya Sheikh. So now comes here, you go to school, you go to work. You may find someone who will come to you and call you, you Muslim. Like, the, you know, in North America, you Muslim. Yo, Mohammed, Muslim. 
what's up with your beard you Muslim and they're calling you names and stuff right you know I don't know about here in Norway I don't know if they respect him much I don't know I don't know but in North America sometimes you have those people who want to you know you know like ridicule for way well, more hard man you you Muslim you this and that and that so what are you gonna do with those guys you know and they come to oh sisters within hijab you know with the abaya oh you're ninja and they call her ninja <laughs> what would you do now huh you see there's certain things right certain you know you know you have to act accordingly i'm not saying go and what 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 muslim let me show you what a muslim can do right. i'm not saying do that my friend right say so, let me tell you about islam and it's not islam it's islam right let me tell you it's it's for me it's when i get that for me it's an opportunity to give that way to people i know they're gonna try to push you on those buttons you know to try to fuel you but you know this is exactly what you know you need that time to go and say oh this is an opportunity for me to give that one this man does not know she doesn't know but you know what i'm gonna be patient with them talk to them about the beauty of an islam they're gonna come and ask you about questions maybe about why islam allows you to marry four women they all ask that question the very first thing is, oh, you must marry four women. He says, you know what? Oh, you, you, I'm not married to four women, am I? And then he says, let me talk to you about something else. Let me tell you about Islam first of all. I talk to him about the beauty of Islam, prophets, why prophets being sent to different, you know, prophet Jesus being sent to people, you know, why prophet Jesus was sent to the people, why prophet Moses was sent to the people, why prophet and prophet Muhammad had miracle. What is his miracle? Talk to him about Islam. This is for me to that one. But it requires some hikmah, wisdom, and some patience. Right? That's what I have to say. I mean, this is like an open-ended question. There's so much I can say, but I hope you get the point, inshallah. Zakallah, I got it. Zakallah, I got it. May Allah bless you. Thank you. We have a question over here about because of the mercy of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam, can we use him as an intermediary in dua that we make dua to him khair. or through him? Zakallah, khair. another good question. Can we, this is for Muslims though, you know, it's only for Muslims. They ask this question about intermediary and intercession, shafa'a. Can I ask the Prophet, Ya Rasulullah Shafa'li, you know, the Prophet, you know, ask, make dua through the Prophet, is that what it is? Right, now. It happened in the time of Abdullah ibn Abbas. There was rain at the time of Umar, in the era of Umar. They needed to make dua to stop, you know, to, uh, they needed rain. So they went to the closest person to the Prophet, who was the, you know, uh, the uncle of the Prophet the cousin of the Prophet and asked him to make dua they asked him to invoke Allah on their behalf why because he's the closest to the Prophet so chances are inshallah that his supplication will be accepted now comes some some scholar who says you can make dua you know invocation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala saying Ya Rasulullah it is not permissible, ladies and gentlemen, brothers and sisters. It is not permissible to use the name of Rasulullah as intermediary in your dua. If you ask, ask Allah. If you seek refuge from, seek refuge from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Don't ask no one other than Allah. It is who, who gives life? Who gives death? Who gives sickness? Who gives the cure? Who benefits? Who harms? Khalas, put your trust in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. If you need to ask anything from anyone, go ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. وَإِذَا سَأَلَكَ عِبَادِ عَنِّي فَإِنِّي قَرِيبٌ أُجِيبُ دَعْوَةَ الدَّعِي إِذَا دَعَانِ When my servants ask you about me, Allah says, I'm near. Let them invoke me. Let them invoke me. Let them supplicate to me. So when you want to make dua, make dua straight to Allah. Ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with his names and attributes. Ask Allah with his names and attributes. There are certain etiquettes when you make dua. Sometimes people, you know, when we say dua in Arabic, in Arabic dua means invocation or supplication. For those of you who don't understand Arabic. There are certain etiquettes for your dua to be accepted. Don't just go and say, oh Allah, give me. There are certain etiquettes. There's so many etiquettes. One of them is to use the names and attributes of Allah in your dua. Allahumma ya arham ar rahimin ya ahad, ya samad, ya, you know, use his names, the beautiful names of Allah and his attributes when you're making dua. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala shall grant you what you asked for bi idnillah. Assalamu alaikum. Alaikum assalamu alaikum. Yeah, dear Sheikh and uh, Assalamu alaikum to all uh, audience too. Uh, I have a question here. The Prophet uh, ﷺ ever left an Arab, Arab, uh, Saudi Arabia or Arab country 
into maybe China, West, or mm. so like that. And, and one more, yeah. he spoke other uh, language than uh, Arabic. I'm sorry? Did he speak other language than Arabic? The Prophet, did he speak other languages other than Arabic? Yeah. Zakallah. Second question, did he speak any other? No, he spoke Arabic. He spoke Arabic, he spoke Arabic, the language of the Quran. Yet, when he sent uh, um, uh, those messengers with messages to different kings, like the king of Sea, like uh, Qaisar, the king, you know, and the, the king of Rome, the king of Persia, the king of Egypt. He sent them messengers who spoke the language of those people, of those, of those uh, countries. That was the second question. The Prophet spoke Arabic. With regard to the first question, did he move out of Arabia? Did he go out of Arabia? He went all the way to Mor Morocco. This is why I'm Muslim today. Because the Prophet came to Morocco and brought Islam to me. Right, Sheikh Yusuf? The Prophet came to Norway. This is why we have Muslims here today. The Prophet went to Somalia. This is why we have Muslims today, right? Why you say yes? Because I told you, you just say yes. I don't know. I'm telling him the prophet went to Somalia. He's gonna go to his, oh really? Yeah, Somalia? Why? He never told me. <laughs> it's a good question, but I'm just uh, throwing a joke at you, okay? Rasulullah never left. This is the beauty of Islam. He never left Arabia. Yet, his message went across the world. There are people. Do you know? Let me ask you a question. Do you know what's the reward of praying behind, you know, the Prophet? Let's say in Mecca. If you were to pray in Mecca, what's the reward of one salah in Mecca? Do you know what that is? Was it thousand? Hundred thousand. One prayer in Mecca is equivalent to hundred thousand prayers. What about Medina? If you were to pray one prayer in Medina, what's the reward of that prayer in Medina? Hundred thousand. One thousand. One thousand in Medina. Hundred thousand in Mecca. Companions, the Sahaba, they left all these rewards to go and travel to China where we find some graves of the companions. They went to Persia, they went to Istanbul. Istanbul, they have some, uh, 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 some graves of the companions in Istanbul. How about Morocco? Uh. <laughs> <laughs> We've got Alhamdulillah Tabi'een who came, maybe not probably like Awqa ibn Nafi. Uqbab ibn Nafi' and Al-Tariq ibn Ziyad. These were not companions, but you know, the tabi'in, tabi'in, you know, predecessors. These are the people who brought Islam to you and I. It wasn't the Prophet, which means that this message, subhanAllah, you know, there was a saying, not, maybe not so, so sound or authentic when Bilal came to the Prophet, says, he says, Alhamdulillah, that guidance is from Allah, not from you. As if it was from you, you'd have given it to people like your family, and you, forget, you have forgotten about people from Abyssinia from Habasha because he was from Habasha right Ethiopia he says mercy is from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so this message the companions they understood the value of, the, of this message so they came out calling to this message they came out now it's a very good question thank you for asking it so this is again the concern the focus do you do have that concern do you call people in your school you go to school do you call people to Islam in your school how about your work how about, you know, anywhere you are? Are you a da'i? Are you a caller? Because if you don't call them, they will call you. If you don't call them, they will call you. If you don't call them to the truth, they will call you to falsehood. There's a guy from the US. Let me share this with you. Which we know personally. He used to live in the dorms. Do you guys know what the dorms are? The dormitory, you know, like in school universities, they have a dorms, like apartments. And he used to go and pray by himself. He never called, he never did anything, you know. And the people, his friend used to come and call him, you know, sometimes, you know, come and play with us bowling. And he would say, I'm busy, this and that. He never dared to tell them about his time or anything. But they kept on working on him. Come on, guy, you know, outsider, you know, be cool, come and this and that. You know how it is with the teens and youth. One day he decided to go bowling with them. I'm not saying that bowling is wrong or haram, but he decided to go bowling with them. The first day he played bowling and the time for prayer came and then he says, I have to go and do my prayers. They let him do his prayers. They says, cool, do your prayers. He came then, you know, a few days later, they came playing again. The, the time for prayer came. He says, I have to go and pray. They said, oh, we're almost done. We're almost done. Let's just finish this game and then you can go and pray. He did, but he prayed late. Look at the steps of shaitan. The shaitan has steps. 
The shaitan never comes and tell you, become a non-Muslim. The shaitan will never come and tell you, commit adultery. The shaitan will tell you, look at her. And then when you look, you will say, who are you, terrorist? Are you an extremist? Smile, man. Smile at her. And then you would smile. And he would tell you, hey, man, you have to give her da'wah or she will hold you responsible by Allah you know, in front of Allah. Call her to Islam. But this is not here. Call her, go to a coffee shop like Starbucks. Take her there. And then give her da'wah there. And then you go. You have a meeting with her. And this is how it goes. Nadratun, fabtisamatun, fasalamun, fakalamun, falikaun, famusibatun. For those who understand Arabic, it all starts with a look. And then from the look, a smile. And from the smile, hi. And then from hi, uh, bye. And then, you know, <laughs> you know, this is how it is, man. So be careful of the traps of shaitan. Shaitan's got traps. So they came and they said, you know, oh, it's all right. You know, we were almost done. Almost done with the prayer. And then he prayed, you know, played. And then he went to pray. He played late when the prayer played few days later he kept on you know playing and everything one day they all were holding beers so they came and they said oh beer it's so, oh haram haram i cannot drink alcohol they said no this is just a uh, bar, 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 uh, barley bar, 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 barley you know it's, been, it's made from barley and barley. I, I don't know <laughs> barley it's made from uh, uh, corn i don't know yeah, yeah corn that sort of thing he said it's just corn man it's all right just just have a sip they kept on saying, come on, come on, you know how this youth are, go, 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 go. So he had a sip of beer. He liked it. Another sip, another sip. He got drunk. One beer, because he never drank before. So he drank one beer, he got drunk. He saw some girl giving her heart, you know, he went to embarrass her, giving her a hard time. Her friend saw him. He took this ball and got into an argument with him. He took this ball and thing, and then he hit him in his head. He killed him on the spot. He died drunk. This Muslim guy died drunk. The story here, the essence is, this is true, Allah, it's true. Step by step, step by step, step by step. So at school, do you call people towards Islam? How can you call them towards Islam? Just by you, you go to school? All right, to all the students here. We Muslims, we do not accept nothing but A's. Do you guys have the A system? A, B, C, D? Yeah. Here? Or... Numbers, one, one, two, 20, off of 20. Oh, we Muslims, we only take 20s. Off of 20s. We don't take Bs, we don't take Cs. We only A plus students. Why? Because you're the Muslim. Who's this guy always getting 20 off of 20? Or oh, A's, A's, who's this guy? His name is Muhammad. Oh, Muhammad. I, I know. And then, this is in, in fact, it's a da'wah to Islam. So call them, anywhere you are. Have a chance, you know, talk to people about Islam. Your manners, your behavior, you know, uh, at school, at work, anywhere you are, try brothers, to brothers, portray the sorry. right image of an Islam. Yeah, brothers, it's all right, we're praying together. You don't worry. We are going to call the prayer. It's all right. Yes, yeah, Maghrib, but you can wait five, ten minutes. It's not a big issue. Don't have to keep running. He's talking. He's answering the question. Have some etiquette. Think about it. What's right and what's wrong? Let's use our intelligence now, bros. Come on. Zakum Allah khair. I'm, I'm, I'm done. Uh, it's uh, just that it's a good question. Zakallah khair. We have to understand our responsibility and our obligation in this country or any country where we are. We have to portray the right image of Islam to others because we've been scrutinized. People are looking at us. Any wrong movement that you do, anything, it will go against, not against you, against Islam and Muslims. So please portray the right image of Islam to non-Muslims. Zakum